Hello and welcome to this session of the Outlier Pod Festival. I'm super excited that you're here. And in this brief 30 minutes that we have, I'm gonna jump into 10 tools that professional podcasters use that you can use as well to really level up both the quality of your podcast, but we're also gonna talk about tools to promote your podcast episodes, to grow your audience, and then also how to monetize your podcast, especially if you're just getting started and just kind of getting your feet wet. And there's a little asterisk next to 10 tools because I'm gonna try and squeeze in some extra ones if I can. Um, so it'll be 10-ish tools, 10-ish tools to really help you level up your podcast. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Travis Albritton. I'm the head of content at Buzzsprout, which essentially just means that I create lots of videos and podcast episodes and blog posts about podcasting, from launching a podcast to growing a podcast, monetizing podcasts, everything in between. And so I use a lot of tools. I'm always experimenting with new tools and softwares as they come out to see, is this something worth recommending, worth promoting uh, to our podcasters at Buzzsprout? And so I do experiment with a lot of these different tools and softwares. Uh, and so the ones that I'm gonna show you today are the ones that I really fully endorse. Uh, I've also launched eight podcasts, which kind of seems crazy when I say it out loud. Uh, eight is a lot. It's more than probably anyone should, but I've launched eight podcasts and currently hosting and producing both Buzzcast and podcasting Q&A. All of this to say, I've used lots of tools in lots of different ways, and these are the tools that I use myself. So I feel great about recommending them to you. And the first tool that I want to tell you about is my favorite audio editing software for podcasters, and that's Hindenburg Journalist Pro. While it's nice when you first get into podcasting that there are lots of free options out there for you, like GarageBand and Audacity, uh, and it's nice that they're free because when you're first getting started, you aren't really sure, is this podcasting thing really gonna work out? Is it really something I wanna do for a long time? But then once you've committed, you said, okay, I love podcasting, I'm here to stay, and I'm ready to make some smart financial investments. Investing in a high quality software like Hindenburg Journalist Pro is really gonna help you in a number of ways. And the reason that I like Hindenburg over some of the other pro level audio editing softwares like Reaper and uh, Adobe Audition and Logic Pro is because it was designed with podcasting in mind. So some of like the higher end audio editing softwares were designed for music mixing, right? So if you go into Adobe Audition, there are so many things that you can do to edit, mix, and master your podcast episodes, but so much of it is overkill. Hindenburg Journalist Pro really pared down the different things that you would need to really tailor your podcast episodes, so it's extremely user-friendly. You don't have to be an audio engineer to understand how to use it, and uh, you really get a great product on the back end. The other thing that I really like about Hindenburg Journalist Pro is it saves me a lot of time. When I was using GarageBand, when I was using Audacity, there are so many workarounds that you have to do. You, you'll find yourself coming up against a wall of, I want to do this with my podcast episode, but I either can't figure out how to do it, or it's like a 17-step customized process <laughs> that I have to do every single time that I do my podcast. With Hindenburg Journalist Pro, so much of that is baked right into it that it really takes a lot of the time off of your editing. So one of my favorite features is their voice profiler which uh, is just incredible. So you can really get into the weeds of your EQ settings, your equalizer settings, really uh, optimizing your vo vocal frequencies to make your voice sound as amazing as possible. So rather than every single time going in and trying to manually adjust those EQ settings, you can just have Hindenburg analyze your voice and then from then on, it will match the EQ settings every single time you record. Stuff like that just really makes Hindenburg Journalist Pro a great option for podcasters. But like many of you, I am now recording 100% of my podcast interviews remotely. Like we can't just go into the office to record Buzzcast anymore. Now we're using online software. And the one that we use that we recommend is Squadcast. And the reason that I really like Squadcast is that you get the video element of being able to interview somebody, being able to see them, establish a rapport with them, but it also records lossless audio. So that just means it's completely uncompressed. It's in its purest form and you're really getting the best audio quality that you possibly can. Now with any remote recording software that you use, whether it's Squadcast or Zoom or Skype or Zencaster or you know, any of these others that are out there, nothing will save you from a bad internet connection. Okay. So first and foremost, 
regardless of the software you use, you want to make sure you have a solid internet connection, that your guest has a solid internet connection. But then beyond that, out of all the different tools that are out there, Squadcast has become my go-to uh, because you do get that lossless wave file that's completely uncompressed. It's constantly uploading the file as you're recording. So if your guest drops off or accidentally hits hang up, you don't lose that recording. Um, Squadcast is able to give that to you. And then also if something happens and you don't get your initial recording, um, whether it's corrupted or the, the guest wasn't able to upload the file, Squadcast also generates a backup voice over IP audio recording. So at least you can save your interview. So because of that redundancy, and because of how responsive they are in their in their help chat, Squadcast really is a fantastic option if you're doing a lot of long distance podcast recordings right now. Now, the next tool that I want to share with you is actually a feature we just rolled out in Buzzsprout uh, called Magic Mastering, because we saw a lot of our podcasters um, would get really close, like 90% of the way to a phenomenal podcast episode. But then in that mastering phase where you're really fine tuning your podcast audio, it can take a lot of time and effort to learn how to use those tools appropriately. Like how do you use a high and low pass filter and what frequencies do you set them to? How do you compress your audio file and, and what is too much compression and not enough compression? And what does normalization do? And what, is a, what does a limiter do? And all of these really technical terms that really do make podcasts sound amazing, but you also need like essentially a degree in audio engineering to know how to use them. So we wanted to create a feature within Buzzsprout that allows you to automatically have those processes happen. And so here on the screen, you can see the before and after of a file that's been run through Magic Mastering. Uh, it's taken that first file that had audio levels all over the place. Maybe this is an intro music, followed by some narration, followed by an interview, those three distinct segments that are all at different volume levels. And then Magic Mastering just made them Perfect. And so when you use Magic Mastering for your audio file, it's going to do a number of things. Number one, it's going to set it to the perfect loudness that apps like Apple Podcasts have told us, this is how loud we want your podcast episodes to be. This is what we want your volume to be. And so this sets this to the perfect loudness, which isn't something you can do in a software like GarageBand. We're also going to uh, set your true peak targeting. So that is the loudest parts of your audio will not exceed the threshold that those podcast apps have uh, told us is their standard. Uh, we are going to apply a high pass filter and a low pass filter. And these really knock out some of the frequencies that never show up in human voice and human conversation or in music, but can be really distracting in an audio file. So the hum of an air conditioning unit or your neighbor mowing the lawn next door, those kinds of frequencies magic mastering will filter out automatically and remove those. Magic Mastering will also apply smart adaptive leveling to your podcast. So that's what you're seeing in the before and after is it's analyzing different segments of your podcast and then adjusting the volume levels accordingly. So if you were to do a, a leveling um, function or a leveling effect in Audacity, for instance, it will only apply that leveling effect to the entire track. It's not going to go in and say, oh, for this five seconds, we need to boost it by five decibels. And then for the next 10 seconds, we only need to boost it by three decibels. It's not going to do that. But Magic Mastering does do that. So you really don't have to worry about getting it perfect when you're editing it. You can just get it close enough and then run it through Magic Mastering. We're also going to apply noise and hum reduction. So anything that the low and the high pass filters don't catch, these will catch. So if you get a, a hum in your Audio, for instance, let's say that your XLR cable is right next to a power cable and you start getting this really weird like electronic buzz, Magic Mastering knocks that out. And you can optimize it for spoken word or music. So we will encode it uh, depending on your preferences of whether you're using a lot of music or if you're just a traditional podcast that's a lot of talking to each other. We'll encode it specifically for the settings that you tell us. And then here's the great thing. This happens automatically. So this isn't a manual process that you have to do every single time you upload a podcast to Buzzsprout. Once you set up this feature, that's it. Like you're done. Every single time you upload a podcast episode to Buzzsprout, all this stuff happens automatically. So if you use Buzzsprout for your podcast, then you can absolutely use Magic Mastering to, to do this, to process your audio in this way. If you don't use Buzzsprout and you're looking for an alternative, the closest alternative is going to be Alphonic. Uh, it's a great software. We've used it in the past. We've recommended it in the past, uh, but it's just a much more manual process. So you have to upload your file to Alphonic, put in the settings that you want, you know, process the audio file, download the file, upload it to your host, 
it's just a lot of extra steps. Um, but you absolutely can use Alphonic to get a similar, similar result, similar feature as Magic Mastering. Now, when you are really ready to go all in in your podcast, one of the best investments that you can make is actually outsourcing your podcast editing. If you think about it, so much of your time is spent not just capturing the interviews, capturing the episodes, but then going through and adding your intro segment, adding your voiceover narration, mixing the music bed, exporting it, <laughs> and, and then getting it ready to go and put into your podcast host. And that can take two to three times as long as the actual recording of the podcast itself. And if you're not doing this professionally, if podcasting isn't your job, you might not have a ton of extra free time laying around to make your podcast episodes as great as they can be. And so if you do have a little bit of a budget and you're looking for the best bang for your buck, I really think outsourcing your editing is the best thing that you can do. Because one, you're gonna spend less time editing, which means that you can focus more of your effort and energy and attention on promoting your podcast, growing your audience, uh, looking at monetization strategies, and just trying to figure out, okay, how do I make my podcast as amazing as possible and then get it out to the world? You get all of that time back that you were spending editing, and now your podcast will actually grow faster and reach its full potential. And the other cool thing is that more than likely, the quality of your episodes will improve as well. Because when you choose a really great editing service, not only are you outsourcing it to one person, you're outsourcing it to a team of audio engineers that can mix and master and fully edit your podcast episodes and really make it sound professional. So not only are you saving time, but you're probably going to get a better podcast episode as well. And you can expect to spend between $16 and $120 per episode. Uh, now, obviously, the more things you want your podcast editing service to do with your podcast episode, the more it will cost. But this is a really good ballpark for when you're first getting started to expect to be in this range. And the, the two that we have used that we recommend uh, that we only hear glowing things about are Resonate Recordings and We Edit Podcasts. Uh, both of them do a phenomenal job and really are designed to meet any number of needs that you could potentially have for your podcast. So if you're looking to outsource your editing, those are the first two places I would go to see if they have what you need, if they can do what you want them to do. If you're looking to get back some time and increase the quality of your podcast episodes, you might just completely ignore some of the earlier tools and just outsource your editing to some professionals. So now I wanna shift into some promotional strategies. And the first one we're gonna talk about is search engine optimization. So if you come from the blogging world or if you're familiar with SEO, essentially what it is is you're trying to convince Google that when someone searches something related to your podcast, that your podcast episode should be the first result. And one of the big things that really helps with that is transcriptions, taking your podcast audio and turning it into a blog post, essentially, that you can post to your website. That just gives Google more information to be able to search through, to crawl through, to justify putting your podcast episode above somebody else's podcast episode. And so the service that we really like is called otter.ai. They really have a fantastic transcription uh, service. It's a machine uh, automated transcription. And so you're not waiting for a, a physical human being to listen to your audio recording, edit it, and send it back to you. It happens pretty phenomenally fast. And the thing that we really like about Otter is that not only is it really, really accurate compared to a lot of the other machine transcription services, but you get 10 hours of transcripts every single month on their free plan, which is like an insane amount of transcripts if you think about it. And so if you're looking to kind of push into that search engine optimization world, then we really recommend otter.ai to do that. Because again, it's free <laughs> to get started. You get so much time on their free plan and it's really gonna help you uh, be found by new people that aren't listening to your podcast yet. Now, another strategy that is pretty popular with podcasters is to use social media to promote their podcasts. But the trouble with social media is that you're trying to convince someone to stop watching videos of Comedy Central comedians or you know pictures of their niece's second birthday party, quarantine edition, of course, and jump over and listen to a 45-minute podcast episode. That could be a really difficult jump to make, especially if all they see is a link to your podcast and your word that it's something that they need to listen to. But what we've seen and what a lot of other people have seen is that if you can create videos, visually captivating uh, pieces of content that are both promoting your podcast episode and whetting someone's appetite for the rest of it, that's the best strategy to get people to stop scrolling on social media 
and hop over into a podcast app and start listening to your episode. And so you want to create those engaging videos to promote new episodes on social media. And the format that a lot of podcasters use that's become very popular are social media audiograms. The reason those are popular is because you don't have to sit in front of a camera and record something. You can take the podcast audio that you've already produced, take a clip of it, and then create a video. And so here you can see three examples uh, from three different uh, tools. The first one is Headliner, where you can see you know, that they have the transcripts uh, that's being highlighted as the, as the person is saying it. There's a, a small waveform at the bottom that's animating. It, you, it would be animating if this was a video and not a picture, uh, but it'd be animating, it'd be playing on Facebook, it'd be playing on Instagram. And it has all of the graphics that would, you know, that you would associate with your podcast. The one in the middle, Pitchfork Economics, is from Wave. And so you can see it's a very similar style where you have the artwork for the podcast clearly displayed. You have a small waveform towards the top, uh, something telling someone to turn the sound on. That's a huge thing. And then also transcripts as well. And then even Buzzsprout. So we created a tool if someone just wants to dip their feet into it uh, and experiment without spending a ton of time designing their uh audiogram from scratch using our video soundbite. So here you can see an example for one of our podcasters that uses this tool to promote their podcast. And so you have that uh, waveform, you have your artwork, the name of your podcast episode, your your episode link where someone can go to listen to your episode. And uh, again, that's just a free feature in Buzzsprout. And Wave and Headliner also have free plans. So if you want to really design something incredible and amazing, both of them are phenomenal tools. And you can, uh, again, start for free on both of those. And if you host your podcast with Buzzsprout, you can use the video soundbite for free as well. But then when it comes to promoting your podcast, it doesn't matter how good your promotion is if when they first get to your podcast, they're kind of let down by it, <laughs> you know, that that they look at your podcast artwork and they say, eh, it doesn't really seem like this podcast is worth listening to. And so we really highly recommend that your first impression is as great as you can possibly make it. Um, and that comes with getting a professionally designed uh, cover art, professionally designed graphic art. And the service that we really like for podcasters is 99designs. There are several other websites that a lot of people use and recommend. Fiverr is one where you can get really cheap graphic design done. Uh, another one is Upwork. But the problem with those kind of websites is you won't have to find a designer whose work you like or the style that they like. And then it's a lot of back and forth. It's, okay, try this. Okay, I don't like that. Change this, change that. And at the very end, you might not even get something that you're really happy with. And so unless you already know exactly what you want going into it, those websites can actually cost more and just lead to more frustration. What we really like about 99designs is that instead of working with one designer, you run a contest where you say, here's my podcast, here's what it's about, now send me your best ideas. And you'll get dozens of submissions from professional graphic designers from around the world sending you their idea of what they would create for your podcast artwork. And you go through several rounds. So the first round, you're just getting lots of ideas. Then you choose some finalists, some designs that you really, really like, that you want them to continue to iterate on and make better and better. And then when you're really happy, you choose the one that is the winner, and then you pay them after that. And so here I've shown you, I show you two examples. These are two pieces of artwork that we at Buzzsprout have had designed from 99designs. The first one is how to start a podcast. It was the first podcast we ever produced for Buzzsprout, uh, which has gone phenomenally well uh, for us. And then podcasting Q&A, which is our newest podcast. You can see both of these look phenomenal, that if somebody saw this in a podcast app, they would know, okay, this person means business. This is a podcast worth investing my time into, especially at a time right now where podcast listening is, is shifting. People's habits are shifting, their listening preferences are shifting. And so more than ever, that first impression really matters. And so if you designed your artwork using Canva, a free software that you can use online to, to make graphic designs, it's totally fine, especially if you're just getting started. Don't feel like you have to do this at first, but once you're like committed to your podcast and you wanna make it as professional as possible, use 99designs to get something really phenomenal designed for your podcast. Now, the next promotional strategy that I wanna talk about is a paid promotional strategy. So social media is typically free. Search engine optimization is free. Once you have the graphic design for your podcast, you don't have to pay for that anymore. This is the paid promotional strategy that I really recommend, and that's using overcast ads. 
So again, going back to what makes social media difficult, because many people think about running Google ads or Facebook ads to promote their podcast episodes, is you're trying to shift someone's behavior. You're trying to get them to stop whatever they were doing and start listening to 45 minutes of your podcast episode, which can be really difficult. But with Overcast, which is a podcast player that's available on Apple iOS devices, you can market your podcast directly to people that are audio junkies. So it's not just the average podcast listener that downloads Overcast to listen to podcasts. It's someone that really loves listening to podcast episodes. Like they went out of their way to say, you know what, I'm going to bypass the free Apple podcast app that's already on my phone and I'm going to download something totally different. And that's who the person is that you're going to be marketing your podcast to. Someone who's always looking for new content, someone who's already always looking for things to not only fall in love with, but then tell their friends about. So this really is like the power listener that you're targeting. The other thing that's really cool with Overcast ads is you're able to specifically target people that are listening to podcasts in your category. So if you have a business podcast and you want to promote it to people that you know are interested in business podcasts, when you set up your Overcast ad, you say, hey, I want to promote this to people that are listening to a business podcast. And that's where it will show up. So it's really well targeted for your podcast and the category. And uh, so you'll know that the people that are seeing it are people that are likely to enjoy listening to your podcast. And then here at the bottom, you can see I've given you a couple of examples of what an Overcast ad looks like. So this is inside of the app, inside of the player. When someone is listening to an episode, you can see that banner at the bottom where that is an ad. If you click on that, you can go and subscribe to that podcast while you're listening to something else. So it really is a phenomenal listener experience. And when we have done Overcast ads for our podcasts, we've seen between $1.50 and $2 per new subscriber, which compared to a Facebook ad, it's like night and day difference, like not even a competition. The other really cool thing is that once you get an ad slot, it runs for 30 days. So it's not like a one or two day thing. Once you get an ad slot, it runs for an entire month. You get an entire month of promotion. And then depending on how competitive that category is, because some categories are more competitive than others, you can expect to spend between $100 and $900 for that 30 days. But again, if you're getting subscribers for $3, let's say, and you spend $900, that's 300 new podcast listeners that not only listen to an episode, but have subscribed to your podcast and are gonna start listening to all of your episodes. So this really is a phenomenal strategy if you have some budget to spend on advertising and you wanna get the best bang for your buck. We really like overcast ads. Now, the next tool that I wanna to talk about is uh, advanced podcast statistics. And then depending on which podcast host you use, the ones that you have are gonna be a little bit different, but it's very important for you to not only have access to stats, but also know what to look for and how to use them to grow your podcast. So you wanna be able to track how listeners are responding to your episodes. That's the best data that you can get to know what's working and what needs to change. And so regardless of the podcast host that you use, you should be able to track your download trends. So not just how many downloads does each podcast episode have, but also, am I trending in a positive direction? Like, is my podcast growing or is it shrinking a little bit or am I staying the same? You should be able to see what kind of devices people are listening on. Is it Apple Podcasts? Is it Google Podcasts? Is it Spotify? Are they listening on a phone? Are they listening on, on an Alexa smart device? Are they listening on a TV? Like, where are they listening? How are they listening? And then location, like what countries are they in? What cities are they in? And so here I've just grabbed some snapshots from the advanced podcast statistics from Buzzsprout. Um, and so you should have something similar to this in your podcast host. If you don't, check to see if they have uh, an advanced stats feature. A lot of podcast hosts don't include their advanced stats in their base packages. It's something you have to uh, add on to your uh, monthly rate. So check to see if like for five or six bucks, you can unlock advanced podcast statistics. It's totally worth it because you're going to get the best data that you possibly can. Uh, but if you use a host like Buzzsprout, then you already have your advanced podcast stats built into your uh, built into your plan. But beyond your podcast host statistics, you also want to dig into your app specific analytics because your podcast host sees when somebody downloads an episode, they can see where they downloaded it from, they can see what device they downloaded it on. But as far as the behavior of that listener, once they hit play, that's something that you'll only find within the app itself. Apple Podcasts knows how much of an episode you listen to before you stop listening. Spotify, exactly the same. And so you want to dig into your app-specific analytics. So Apple Podcasts has Podcast Connect, 
Google Podcasts just released their Google Podcast Manager. Spotify has their podcasters dashboard and Stitcher has their podcasters portal. And inside of each of these is gonna tell you, it's gonna show you specific stats and analytics that are for their app. So you'll be able to see where people are dropping off. You'll be able to see, uh, for example, in Apple Podcasts, how many new listeners that listen to that podcast episode subscribe to your podcast. Like those kind of details that only the app has, you'll be able to find those in your podcast app analytics. And so those are the, the links that you're looking for. Uh, the screenshot that you're seeing, that's in the Buzzsprout advanced statistics. We have quick links to go and visit those websites. But if you just do a quick Google search, then you'll be able to find all four of these, be able to claim your podcast to start digging through your statistics. And then last but not least, monetization. Everyone wants to know what's the best way to make money with my podcast. And this is specifically for if you have a small to medium sized podcast and you want to find some sponsors, you want to find some companies that maybe aren't like WordPress or Casper mattress, but are still looking to spend some money with podcast advertising. The one that we really have come to like recently is Podcorn. And the reason that we like Podcorn is because it facilitates the the interaction between you as the podcaster and the person with the purchase decision making at that company. So one of the biggest hurdles to getting sponsors is getting the contact information of the person trying to spend money on podcast ads. So Podcorn really does make that connection very easy. The other reason we like Podcorn a lot is because you're able to negotiate different rates based on the kind of promotion you wanna do. So let's say that you find a product that you use, that you love, and you don't wanna just do a 30 second pre-roll ad at the beginning of your episode. You wanna really promote the heck out of it. You wanna do a uh, review. You wanna spend an entire episode talking about this product. Well, inside of Podcorn, you can tell the brand, you can tell the company, hey, I use this product. I want to promote it. I know my listeners are going to love it. So instead of doing your CPM rate for a pre-roll ad, let's do a CPM rate based on what I am offering in exchange. So we really think Podcorning is doing a great job positioning the podcaster to have a lot more leverage to negotiate with these brands and then making it very easy to connect with brands that you think would be a good fit for your podcast. So if you're trying to figure out the whole monetization thing, you aren't really sure where to start, we recommend getting started with Podcorn, at least to see if that's something that you even want to do. And you can sign up for free. And then on the back end, Podcorn just makes money whenever you make money. And the cut that they take is significantly less than if you were to go through a podcast network or a typical matchmaking service. So those are the services. Those are the pro tools that I myself use that I recommend to all of our podcasters at Buzzsprout. Uh, if you have any questions at all, anything I can uh, illuminate for you, any questions that you have about the tools that I recommended, uh, that's this is my email, Travis at Buzzsprout.com. Feel free to send me an email. And then as we're wrapping up, I just want to mention briefly that if you use Buzzsprout for your podcast and you want to use some of these products, like you see some of these tools and you're like, man, that's a phenomenal product. That's a phenomenal tool that I want to start using. Uh, some of these companies we actually partner with that we believe in the product so much that we said, hey, let's create a relationship where you can give our podcasters a discount. So if you want to uh, download Hindenburg and try it for a 90 day free trial, uh, you can. If you want to get uh, $20 off your 99 designs contest, you can. If you want to use Wave at a discount, you can. If you want to outsource your podcast to We Edit Podcast and get a couple episodes edited at a discount, you can. All you have to do is go to the resources tab in your dashboard and you can get access to those unique discounts. But I hope this was super helpful for you. I hope that now you can see that you're just one or two tools away from really leveling up your podcast and reaching your full potential. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the Outlier Pod Festival.